Good afternoon and welcome to Brock's 111th Convocation Ceremonies and return to in-person convocation. We're so glad that you're here. Just a reminder to please keep your cell phone volume turned off for the duration of your ceremony, as well as to keep your mask on. I ask that you remain seated as the graduates enter the gymnasium.
Now please rise at the sounding of the fanfare for the academic and chancellor's procession as they enter the gymnasium. Please be seated. I declare the 111th Convocation for the conferring of degrees and certificates in session. Chancellor Pearson, Dr. Wells, platform guests, graduating students, parents, and friends. Welcome to Brock University's Spring Convocation, a time of celebration for our students, families, and friends. On behalf of the Brock community, we begin this gathering by acknowledging the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe peoples, many of whom continue to live and work here today. This territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties and is within the land protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. Today, this gathering place is home to many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples, and acknowledging reminds us that our great standard of living is directly related to the resources and friendship of Indigenous people. As a brief reminder, please ensure your masks stay on at all times while on campus today. 
We will also be refraining from handshaking on the platform, but you may wish to watch for gestures and words of congratulations as our graduates make their way across the stage. It is my pleasure this afternoon to introduce from the Chancellor's procession, Dr. Hilary Pearson, Chancellor of Brock University. Dr. Lynn Wells, Provost, Vice Chancellor, and President of Brock University. Mr. David Lepofsky, today's honorary doctorate recipient and our guest to deliver the convocation address. Mr. Pardon me, Dr. Brian Power, Mace Bearer and Associate Vice President, Academic. Elder Dave LeBay, Inu Nation. Dr. Michelle McGinn, Associate Vice President, Research. Ms. Allison Lawn, Brock Alumni Association. Dr. Ingrid Mackis, Dean, Faculty of Social Sciences. And Dr. Suzanne Curtin, Vice Provost and Dean, Graduate Studies. Joining them on stage are university senators, faculty, staff, and student representatives from across the university. I would ask them to also please stand together and be recognized with their colleagues. Please be seated. I now invite Chancellor Pearson to deliver words of welcome. Good afternoon. Friends, family, honored guests, and Brock University graduates, I am pleased to welcome you all to this day of convocation. I am truly glad to be here on campus, in person, celebrating with you on this special occasion. Graduates, I want to start by congratulating every one of you. You already know that today is a milestone in your life. This is a very important event for you and for all who have supported you in your journey to this day. It's also memorable because after more than two years of pandemic-related disruption and uncertainty, we feel even more joy and relief in coming together to celebrate your significant achievements. Earning a university degree is challenging at any time, but you, the class of 2022, overcame some of the most difficult circumstances that our university has seen in generations. The closure of campus, including the residences for a period, the transition to online learning, and the stress of not knowing when it would end or if we would get back to normal. Brock students and their families adapted with resilience, tenacity, and perseverance. I am certain that you will look back on the adversity that you faced during this time and recognize that the situation that you faced with such determination will have had a positive aspect in preparing you for your postgraduate lives. Your families, friends, and other supporters were also important in getting you successfully to this day. Many have acted as mentors, as advisors, as coaches, they have been shoulders to lean on, I am sure, for many of you. I thank them for their commitment, and I share in their admiration for you. Brock is a tight-knit community full of people who want you to succeed. The faculty and staff have worked very hard to give you the knowledge and skills that will serve you well as you move forward into your lives. I want to thank them, too, for their extraordinary efforts through the uncertain conditions of these pandemic years to offer you the best possible education. Brock is an institution founded on the support and generosity of the Niagara community. This community advocated in the 1950s for the region to have its own university. It raised funds in the 1960s for the first buildings to go up here. That generosity continues to this day just two weeks ago, 
we celebrated a transformative gift made to the university this year by the Hajamad family. Dr. Hajamad, a former professor at Brock, and his family are contributing to the expansion of the university and to a next generation of Brock students with a gift to the new engineering program. Our donors and our community partners are our invaluable supporters. Nearly all of Brock's courses include the opportunity for hands-on experiential learning, often in collaboration with organizations in the community. These kinds of opportunities augment our exceptional in-class education and help students to develop your full potential. This wouldn't be possible without individuals who recognize the value of working with Brock and our students. To everyone we have collaborated with this year, thank you so much for your support. Graduates, you're entering the world at a complicated time. We are living in a period of rapid change. Today's world is very different than it was even two decades ago. Yet you will be well prepared to take on the opportunities that I am sure will be presented to you. The education you received and the relationships that you've built here at Brock will serve you well, as will the values that we hold strongly at this university. Integrity, respect, inclusivity, innovation, stewardship, and reconciliation. I conclude by sharing with you the advice of the wonderful writer Maya Angelou. Pursue the things that you love doing and then do them so well that people can't take their eyes off you. Graduates, congratulations on everything you've achieved and warm wishes for your future success. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to call upon Dr. Lynn Wells, Provost, Vice Chancellor and President of Brock University, to deliver her opening remarks. Good afternoon, everyone. Family, friends, honored guests and graduates, welcome to a day I know you've been looking forward to for a very long time. Today, we celebrate your years of hard work and dedication. You've reached the finish line after clearing the hurdles of late night study sessions, writing essays, experimenting in labs, and taking exams in these very gyms. As Chancellor Pearson noted, you've come a long way to get here, but as badgers tend to do, you persevered and you made it. Brock students, you may know, have a long history of facing down adversity and persevering through challenging circumstances. In fact, Brock's first class of 127 students spent their first years learning not in a lecture hall, but in a refurbished refrigeration factory at the foot of the Niagara Escarpment. Like that first class of silver badgers, as they came to be known, you too adapted to what the world threw at you. I know that taking classes in your bedroom or at the dining room table wasn't always easy. We all would have much preferred the classroom over the kitchen. But you carried on. And here you are, a testament to the fortitude necessary to have earned, and I truly mean earned, a degree during the COVID-19 pandemic. I should note that your time at Brock was remarkable for reasons other than the pandemic. These last few years have been exciting ones for our institution, which continues to grow and evolve in ways those silver badgers probably never would have imagined. Brock continues to be recognized for its excellent student experience, being ranked among the best in the country. And for four straight years, Brock has been ranked number one in Canada for its mental health supports, something we should all take great pride in. We've continued to grow significantly our research enterprise and funding, and Brock is now home to 14 Canada research chairs, nationally recognized re researchers working in fields as diverse as cognitive neuroscience and plant biotechnology to muscle health and youth mental health. The Brock Badgers varsity teams often give us reasons to smile, but this year we got to cheer them on to what was an unprecedented year in Badger history, with 10 teams competing in their respective national championships. The most successful season in Brock sports history is one we won't soon forget. 
In 2021, we opened the brand new 15,500 square foot zone fitness center, which, if I may say, may just be the best university fitness center in the country. And we continue our preparations to help host the Niagara 2022 Canada Summer Games this August, a legacy of which will be the fantastic facilities located right here on our campus, available to future Brock students. And of course, your own faculty has had much to celebrate recently, including the launch of a PhD program in sustainability science, the first such program in Canada, significant funding for research in a range of areas, including age-related declines in memory and child welfare, and the formalizing of a partnership with the YWCA, which will see researchers from social sciences tackle issues around poverty, gender discrimination, and equity, diversity, and inclusion. Yes, there's much to be proud of at Brock, and as a new member of the alumni family, I hope that you'll carry that pride with you wherever life, take, life takes you. And of course, I hope life brings you back to campus from time to time, because no matter where you go, and no matter what you do, you will always be a Badger. Graduates, today is a day of joy and excitement. You should feel immense pride in all that you have accomplished. And while I know there's lots happening today, I do hope that you will take a few moments to pause and reflect on the significance of what you have achieved. Many of you are heading off to work, starting what I hope will be long and fulfilling careers. Others may be pursuing further education. Others may be taking some time to decide what the next steps in life will be. Regardless of where you're headed after today, I encourage you to always remember that you are part of a wonderful, diverse community of people here at Brock. The relationships you've made here will last a lifetime and will help you to navigate life's twists and turns. Today, you join more than 113,000 Brock University alumni all around the world who remain strongly connected to their university in a variety of ways, as I hope you will too. Graduates, I wish you the best of luck as you enter this new chapter in your life. Congratulations. Madam Chancellor, it is my great pleasure to introduce disability advocate and constitutional lawyer David Leposki. A graduate of Osgoode Hall and Harvard Law, Dr. Leposki was counsel with the Ontario Ministry of the Eternal General in the Crown Law Office, the Constitutional Law and Policy Division, and the Crown Law Office, criminal, where in recognition of his diverse expertise, leadership and mentorship, he was promoted to the position of general counsel, the highest promotion outside management in the Ontario Public Service. He was named one of Canada's most influential lawyers by Canadian Lawyer Magazine in 2010. Now retired from public service, he continues to share his extensive knowledge and passion with future lawyers including a visiting professor of disability rights and legal education at the Osgoode Hall Law School, an adjunct professor with the University of Toronto Faculty of Law. But many of us will be much more familiar with Dr. Lepofsky's work to change the lives of Ontarians through his advocacy for the rights of disabled people. Indeed, he was recognized with the Order of Canada in 1995 inducted into the Terry Fox Hall of Fame in 2003, and as a member of the Ontarians with Disabilities Act Committee, he fought for the Ontarians with Disabilities Act of 2001, and later the Act of 2005, for which he was recognized with the Order of Ontario in 2007. Today, Dr. Leposki chairs the AODA Alliance which works to support the full and effective implementation of accessibility standards in Ontario. He's also committed to improving the lives and learning environments of children and youth with disabilities. He's a member of the Toronto District School Board's Special Education Advisory Committee and the Kindergarten to Grade 12 Education Standards Development Committee. I have the great honour to present 
Dr. Leposki, to receive at your hands the degree Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. Dr. David Lepofsky, I admit you, I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa, and I grant you all the rights, privileges, and insignia appertaining thereto. Congratulations. I used to practice criminal law, and it's only here that somebody could walk behind you and wrap cloth around your lower part of your neck <laughs> and be masked at the same time and not have me start calculating what charges we should be laying. It is an extraordinary honor to be here with you, and I am so indebted for this opportunity and this privilege. To my fellow graduates, to my fellow graduates, you've come here today at the end of quite a journey. It started when you were in, in elementary school and then through high school, all the studying, all the cramming, all the exams, all the challenges, all the extracurricular activities, and then ultimately the competition, the grueling process to determine where you wanted to go to university, applying, finding the money, and getting in. And then once you were in, the challenge of completing all the courses, writing all the papers, doing all the exams, the experiential learning, and then completing it all so you could arrive here as fellow, as fellow graduates. It's so great to have that all behind you, especially because if you want to get a good job, you need to have a good education, and what a good education you've gotten. It's so good to have it all behind you. No more assignments. Oh, yeah? Sorry, there's one more, and I'm here to assign it to you. Let me talk about the challenge we face, and then let me share an assignment with all of you who are graduating, with all the family members here to celebrate with you, all the university educators and administrative staff, and of course, me too as a fellow graduate. What's our homework today? Well, here goes. We got a problem. We got a problem in Ontario, a problem desperately needing to be fixed. You see, Ontario schools have hundreds of thousands of students with disabilities, physical disabilities, mental disabilities, lear learning disabilities, intellectual disabilities, mental health challenges. Some of you are amidst that population. And of those who are able to get through school, so many college and university students have disabilities. Well, let me see how many of you this touches. I'm going to do an experiment. It's completely unscientific, so therefore it is entirely suited for this venue and time and place. I would like you to please raise your hand now if you have no disability and you are certain you'll never get one later in your life. Raise your hands, please. I don't see any hands. <laughs> Welcome to the weirdest minority of all. People with disabilities are ultimately the minority of all. 
everybody either has a disability now or someone near and dear to them who has a disability or will get one later in life. It's only natural. And yet the problem is that we live in a world, including an education system, which overwhelmingly has been designed and operated under bogus, ridiculous, implicit assumption that it's only for people without disabilities. Now that's not that anybody in our K to, uh, kindergarten to grade 12 school system or our post-secondary system ever sat down and conspired to achieve that objective or that result. In fact, I think they're horrified when I present that fact to them. But the result would be no different had there been such a conspiracy because the physical barriers in buildings, the technology barriers in computers and other software used in the, these po undergraduate, postgraduate, kindergarten to grade 12 learning environments, the digital barriers in websites and documents. How many of you have gotten assignments in PDFs? PDFs are by definition inaccessible to blind people like me. Barriers in the training of those who teach us. Universal design and learning is the fancy name for making sure teachers know how to teach all learners. Ontario's never required that for anybody teaching at any level across the province. We face barriers in experiential learning. Oh, we'd love to find to give you a placement, but we just don't think we can accommodate that disability and so on. Now that's not to say no one can, with a disability can get an education. Of course, many do. You are some of them. But there are many who don't. There are many who can't. And as a result of that, they don't get a college or university education. They don't get the good education that is essential to get a good job. And as a result, we have an unemployment rate chronically facing people with disabilities that our former lieutenant governor and a personal friend, David Onley, has said is not only a national crisis, it's a national shame. Now, I'm not saying no one's doing anything about all these barriers in our education system. Some are, but they're isolated efforts by individual institutions or individual instructors trying to do their best in a system that handcuffs them from being able to do better. What we've done in Ontario is we've left it to every school board to separately figure out what to do for the recurring barriers that they all have. We've left it to every college, every university, every faculty to reinvent the same accessibility wheel. And by the way, did I mention we've just been through a pandemic and people are busy and budgets are, 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 are in, uh, in trouble too often? But that's the problem we gotta fix. Well, what can we do about it? Well, unfortunately, right now, our provincial government doesn't have in place a comprehensive plan, either for the K-12 level or the post-secondary level. But the good news is, one has been delivered to them earlier this year. It's been delivered in recommendations both for the kindergarten to grade 12 world and the post-secondary world. It's been delivered by, appoint by committees that the government can't disregard because the government appointed them. It's been created or been developed by committees that are equally made up of folks from the disability community and educators. I had the privilege of serving on one of those two, the kindergarten to grade 12 standards development committee. These committees each delivered a roadmap that is backed by a con strong consensus of those committees. But, sounds like an infomercial, there's more. Because you see, there's not only a strong consensus in support of the existence of the barriers those committees found and the roadmap to get around them and get rid of them that those committees recommended, but there's a consensus within the broader disability and educator community as well, because each of those two government-appointed advisory committees had to send their draft plans out to the public for input, months of input. 
and there was substantial feedback and it came from the disability community and educators and they shared in the message that these committees and their plans identify the right barriers and the right solutions. The solution is we need those plans adopted and implemented so that universities like yours can have a roadmap that they don't have to reinvent themselves. So what's your homework? Let's get on with the assignment. First, to my fellow graduates, you have now been given a rare gift. The unique training that you've learned at this university that skills you, equips you with researching, writing, speaking, organizing, communicating, persuading. Use it. Use it to help push to get our education system's barriers facing students with disabilities torn down and to prevent new ones from ever being created. How do you do that? Well, do you have smartphones with you? You're not supposed to take them out now. Take them out! Go to a website, www.aodaalliance.org, aodaalliance.org, and sign up for our updates. We'll give you tips on how to do it. Follow at AODA Alliance on Twitter. And then put your cell phones away again, please. But they will give you tips, but you can find creative ways in your own community at whatever institution you're studying at or after you graduate as an alumnus. So that's what you can do. What can Brock's, or what can your families do? Let's turn to them next. What, I came here to celebrate. I didn't expect homework. Well, sorry, you're getting some. Tonight at dinner, when you're celebrating your, your, your family members' graduation and all the excitement, talk to them about what they might do to help with this assignment or to which fulfill this assignment. Maybe you could even go back to the days when you helped your child with homework way back when they were little kids and help them with this assignment, team up together. Add your voice to theirs in trying to persuade our government to lead us to a barrier-free education system. The government's funding it. Let's make sure they fund it to be accessible. To Brock University, who've honored me today, and I'm so indebted to you. How, what kind of chutzpah to turn to you and say, hey, I got homework for you, but guess what? Chutzpah is what community organizing and advocacy is all about. Two suggestions. Number one, go and download and read the Post-Secondary Education Standards Development Committee Report. It's available at that website aodaalliance.org, or just Google it. Don't wait for the province to tell you that you should implement it. Review it, pick out the actions you think would be useful here, and get a good start. Get ahead of others. Not only that, but your university no doubt has an equity, diversity, and inclusion policy, and that's fantastic. But what we've found in time and again, and I'm not talking about your university, I'm talking across the board that often these EDI policies either don't include disability at all or don't give it equal attention. And equity for some is equity for none. And the solution there is, it's a simple one. Don't throw out what you're doing, just add to it if you need to, and add to it by, I got a great idea. Add to it the word accessibility, diversity, equity, inclusion, accessibility. Change the letters around. You know what it is? I-D-E-A. It's idea. And I think that's a good idea. Uh, one quick homework assignment for one person who didn't expect any here. My wonderful wife, Jill. Jill, wave so people can see where you are. Your homework assignment's a simple one. Just keep being the wonderful phenomenal life partner, wife, mom to our child, friend that you've been, because that is the best gift of all that you can give. And finally, the homework assignment for me. My job, all of the above. Sorry, folks, if you don't like your homework assignment, mine's at least as big 
or even bigger. Because if I'm prepared to accept the honor you're giving me today, I have to keep earning it. And that is my commitment to you. So I thank you all for the opportunity to speak with you. And I conclude by saying, folks, let's get on with that assignment. Thank you very much. Will the candidates for the various degrees and certificates please rise? With the degrees and certificates about to be conferred upon you, there comes a certain expectation that you will continue sincerely in the pursuit of learning and truth, and that as far as in you lies, you will promote the interests and welfare of your university. Do you acknowledge this expectation? Yeah. Madam Chancellor, as the candidates have acknowledged the responsibilities that accompany their degrees and certificates, and as they have successfully completed the courses of study prescribed by Senate, I would ask that you admit them to their several degrees and certificates. I admit you. Please be seated. Madam Chancellor, I have the honour to present these candidates to receive a Master of Arts. Li Lei. Madam Chancellor, I have the honor to present these candidates to receive a Master of Business Economics. Tuba Fete. <laughs> Yushan Liu. <laughs> Feva Nagu. Madam Chancellor, I have the honor to present these candidates to receive a Master of Sustainability. Edward Anion. <laughs> Jillian Booth. <laughs> Gavin Estale. Bridget Rosemary McGlynn. Michalina Nettos. Congratulations. Ba 
Baharak Razaki. Madam Chancellor, I have the honor to present these candidates to receive a Bachelor of Arts Honors. Madison Jane Alexander with first class standing. Xavier Conrad Alexi. Adnan Alkadi. John Robert Allen. <laughs> Rasha Almuzani. <laughs> Faisal Alterwane. <laughs> Elijah Luke Atkinson with first class standing. Fabian Gustav Bachman with first class standing. <laughs> Monique Bea Badiola. <laughs> Joanna Balamates. <laughs> Levy Michael Barnett Zeman with first class standing. Veronica Blythe Bernard. Shivan Kamal Beige. Gurleen Kurur Bimar. Haley Brooke Blanchfield. Angela Boca. <laughs> Caitlin Patricia, Patricia Bowderies. <laughs> Bailey Alexandra Bur Burke with first class standing. <laughs> Clara Rose Buddy with first class standing. Amy Louise Cayuga with first class standing. Angel Chang with first class standing. Ashley Kushbu Chanti. Peng Yi Chen with first class standing. Wen Chia Chu. <laughs> Ava Isabella Caraco Montegno. <laughs> Robin Page Kumski with first class standing. <laughs> Michaela Taylor Dickinson with first class standing. Jonathan Daly Edwards. Hussam Mohammed Alzian. Christopher Esposto. Olivia Sydney Beatrice Ethier. Ariel Falbo Guida with first class standing. Scott David Falk. Congratulations. 
Alexis Mercedes Fernandez Oliveira with first class standing. <laughs> Kayla Lindsay Ferns Hackshaw. <laughs> Jenna Danielle Felice. <laughs> Ellie Kim Flock. Paige Fournier with first class standing. Madeline Nicole Fowles with first class standing. Jordan John Furtado. Harshdeep Guiana. Makula Galabuzi Kazam. <laughs> Anna Elizabeth Goldstein. <laughs> Sarah Gordon with first class standing. <laughs> Ethan John Guitard with first class standing. Joshua William James Hagen with first class standing. <laughs> Sabrina Cower Hans. <laughs> Ashley Nicole Harvey with first class standing. <laughs> Amanda Maria Hempel with first class standing. Jiyun He. Katrina Louise Hebert with first class standing. Alexander Hoffman. Maria Kimberly Holette. <laughs> Abigail Ann Hopper. <laughs> Zeng Wang Hung. <laughs> Jed Michael Allen Hudson. Mitchell Thomas Hunter with first class standing. Jordan Elizabeth Eisner with first class standing. <laughs> Kelly Aramozelli Ezekiel Metatron. Andrea Dorothy Jacobs. Justin Lee Janowski. Zura Jabrell. Jenna Lydia Kemp. Oliver Spencer Kofed. Anthony Corstangi with first class standing. Mason Paul Kerchik. Janine Catherine Lagunzen with first class standing. Georgia Caroline Grace Langway Smith. Robert Jason Latchford.
Catherine Latimer with first class standing. Jasmine Lajita with first class standing. Andrea Jacqueline LePage with first class standing. Ken Sing Lee with first class standing. Thomas Lilo with first class standing. Ethan Kahan Silvana Lasamna. Alicia Doreen Lowe. Katie McLean. McKenna, McKenna Dorothy Mayers with first class standing. Monique Tyra Maison. Jessica Christine Maitland with first class standing. Sean Malley with first class standing. Manula Heather Malin Ruiz with first class standing. Bhavnik Singh Manku. Jesse Roman, Roman Merrick with first class standing. Virgil Mars. Aliyah Janelle Mayers. Stephen Mayelli. Isabella Yasmin Mohammed. Uzumaka Yunus Manwe. Ailish Morgan. Owen Narai. Griffin Piper Neil Morbido. Justin David Nichols. Tracy Well Nayamoto. Oibola Flora Olawi. Carly Pegliacci. <laughs> Vanessa Patton. <laughs> Miriam Pajwak. <laughs> Pina Picciarillo with first class standing. Michael Tyler Pimentel. <laughs> Kyle James Pipe. <laughs> Stephanie Ann Pouliot with first class standing. <laughs> Kate Rebarder. Jack Riddell. <laughs> Brian Morris Roach. <laughs> Max Carson Robert, Roberts Ramos with first class standing. Congratulations. 
Mackenzie Donna Shirley Siloon Rockburn with first class standing. Jennifer Rodriguez. Mateus John Roost with first class standing. Georgia Rudolph. Sar Sadie. Samantha Takai Chanel Santana Chambers with first class standing. Daniel Schmall. Pranav Seth. Nelia Shaheen. Trenton Brian William Simpson. Brett Douglas Sing Singleton. Dahlia Alejandra Soto Ricardo. Curtis Maxwell Stewart. Kieran Riley Stewart. <laughs> Stephanie Aluremi Folofolua Tayo. <laughs> Isabella Lorraine Tenye with first class standing. Danielle Michael Thomas. Oh, sorry, Danielle Michelle Thomas. Congratulations. Billy Savannah Thompson with first class standing. Gavin Douglas Thompson. Hu Nian Chun. Parker Glenwood Vale with first class standing. Sydney Van Lewin. Rebecca Van Massenhoven with first class standing. Zen Wei, <laughs> McKenna Lynn Williams with first class standing, <laughs> Kelly Wilson, Dominica Anna Winnek. <laughs> Hong Ching William Wong. <laughs> Nok Fung Keith Wong. <laughs> Justin Zirk Xavier. Victoria Ann Zakar. <laughs> Ji Yi Zhao, with first class standing. Okay. 
Madam Chancellor, I have the honour to present these candidates to receive a Bachelor of Arts with Major. Mohamed Ejaz Ahmed. <laughs> David Anizoto. <laughs> Lucas James Blad. <laughs> Christopher Chapman. Johan Bartholomew de Souza. Anam Fateh. Kristen Alicia Formica. Jamar Foster. Tristan Grant Cole David Heipel with distinction Pavalan Jayaratnam Abdul Kazim Sion Ko Anthony Michael Livia Laura Maliocchi John Philip Manrique Mujtaba Bushta. <laughs> Jaden Bertrand Nearing Rampersad. <laughs> Alexis Peterson. <laughs> Shi Yu Chu. Serendaz Khan Rator. <laughs> Sanan Salim. <laughs> Sohaib Salim. <laughs> Mohit Sharma. <laughs> Ian Taher. Dylan Jordan Wall. <laughs> Yi Fan Zhu. Yes, okay. Madam Chancellor, I have the honor to present these candidates to receive a Bachelor of Arts three year. Mazia Ahmad. <laughs> Lara Jean Aston with distinction. <laughs> Ikaz Kor Baga. <laughs> Sadi Sajid Balush. Ashwin Bist. <laughs> Connor Brian James Bradburn. <laughs> Latavia Brown. <laughs> April Brianna Campbell.
Dan Dankin with distinction. Simrandeep Kaur Dillon. Priyanka Natura Demarn. Sabrina Piskorowski. Alessandro Aramida. Claire Elizabeth Ann Farquharson. Ryan Matthew Fernandez. Eden Ferraro. Sabrina Bianca Felice. Bailey Gill. Nicole Gonsalves. Nuo Ting Huang. Murray Huck. Dave Jerrywala. Matthew David Kelly. Sydney Elizabeth Kuhn. Natalie Grace Lefebvre. Rongjin Lee. Ki Zhang Liu. Deanna Marie Mail. Dawson Smith McEwen. Joshua McKillop. Taylor Moore. Brooklyn Musica. Uluwadamilola Ogunawal. Diana Okal. Hao Tan Chi, with distinction. <laughs> Ling Xiao Q. Ibrahim <laughs> Qureshi. <laughs> Antonio Salvador Rodriguez Castro. Diana Rita Syed. Shayana Mata. Baljot Singh Sandhu. Randeep Sandhu. Ashka Neil Shah. <laughs> Hayden Paul Gerard Spellier. <laughs> Ryan Charles Stevens. <laughs> Madison Annalise Stoll with distinction. Alexandra Townsley.
Tyler Richard Vanderloos. Ethan John Van Zalen. Daniel Edward Verasso. Shinran Wang. Carly Tamea Wright, White. Mitchell Alexander Wilson. Emily Wright. Ming Zhang Kian Li. Madam Chancellor, I have the honor to present these candidates to receive a Bachelor of Business Economics honors. Tony Akiki. <laughs> McGregor Terrence Allen with first class standing. <laughs> Yu Chow with first class standing. Bin Deng. <laughs> Benjamin Nicholas DeHooge. <laughs> Michaela Maya Evans with first class standing. <laughs> Brianna Lynn Fogel with first class standing. <laughs> Abilash Gaikwad. Gemini Gandhi. Bhav Hitu. Ridwanul Islam. Omar Wajdi Mashale. <laughs> Stephen James McKinnon. <laughs> Bryce William Mitchell with first class standing. <laughs> Timmy Osamobor. Omar Sabuni with first class standing. Bastion Slimers with first class standing. Wen Liang Wang. Yunhan Wang. Ryan Daniel Willis with first class standing. Hairu Zhu. Madam Chancellor, I have the honor to present this candidate to receive a certificate in teaching English as a subsequent foreign language. Sarah Adlu.
Madam Chancellor, whereas certain candidates who have successfully completed the course of studies prescribed by Senate but are absent from this convocation for just cause, I request that you confer upon them their degrees and certificates in absentia. I admit them to their various degrees and certificates in absentia. The Senate of Brock University has recommended awarding of a Dean's Medal to the graduates in each faculty with the highest standing in a first honors degree and the highest standing in a first pass degree. I take pleasure in inviting Katerina Hebert and No Ting Hyung to accept these awards. You know those embarrassing moments? That just happened. Oh, well. <laughs> Good afternoon, Madam Chancellor, Dr. Wells, members of the platform party, and of course, our graduates and families and friends. As a member of the Brock University Alumni Association and an alumna, from Child Studies and Psych in 1995, Applied Linguistics Communication Disorders in 2001, and a Master of Education in 2010. I am honored to be here today to congratulate each of you on receiving your degree this afternoon. You are officially Brock alumni, but what does it mean to be part of this community? It means that today, you join a community of more than 115,000 graduates who are willing to connect with you, work with you, mentor you, and advocate for you in your personal growth and professional development. It means the network you've built as a student will continue to grow and evolve as you shape the next chapter in your life. When you leave campus today, remember that the value of your degree is a reflection of the personal and professional successes of all of us. As alumni, it is our collective responsibility and privilege to make a positive mark on the world in our own unique ways. Every success, no matter how big or small, contributes to the reputation of the university and in turn makes an impact on the value of every single Brock degree. Not just in this gymnasium right now, but every degree that came before and every degree that will come long after you've left. As, the start, as you start this new chapter in your lives, see yourselves as ambassador of your university. Share your Brock experience with others, and be sure to share your journey with us. We want to know what you've been up to, so please keep in touch. Share your email, follow us on social media, attend events, or drop by the alumni office, if you're on campus, and to say hello. The Alumni Association is honored to welcome you today and every day thereafter. I invite all of you to join us in the Rankin Family Pavilion at the base of the tower after today's ceremony, where you can get your first taste of being part of the Brock alumni community. 
before we do that, I'd, ask, I'd like to ask each and every Brock grad in the room to stand. New graduates, parents as well, faculty, staff, and if you're a Brock grad, please stand up, any of you, if you are able. Class of 2022, this is your alumni family. Congratulations and welcome to the Brock University Alumni Association. Please be seated. We're almost there. <laughs> Today you are participating in celebrating the graduation of our students, our alumni. Each of our graduates has studied hard and completed the degree requirements here at Brock University. These achievements have been supported by the dedication of our faculty and staff, contributions of our alumni and donors, support of governor, governance of our Board of Trustees and Senate members, and engagement of community and institutional partners. You've attended today's ceremony, but I know you have done much more. You have supported, assisted, and guided many of the students graduating today, and their success is also your success. You have succeeded in contributing to the academic and professional accomplishments of our graduates before you. Together, we have helped to achieve the dreams of, of those who assisted in establishing this university in 1964. Together, we have supported post-secondary education in the Niagara region. Although today's graduation ceremony is about our students, it illustrates what we can achieve together as members of the broader Brock University community. Our students, our graduates, today have become alumni members of this community and I look forward to their involvement and contributions to the vitality of the university in the future. Once again, I extend my sincerest congratulations to each of you graduates here today. We will now conclude with the singing of O Canada, led by Brock alumna Jennifer McKillop. When our national anthem is finished, will all family and friends please remain seated until the graduates and platform party have left the hall. Graduates, please exit toward the athletic fields, families, out the main gym doors through which you came. From there, I invite you to explore the campus, to stop by Alumni Alley, and to explore the photo trail. If you need to return your gown and receive your diploma immediately, turn left as you exit and return to the gowning room in the Bob Davis gym. At this time, please rise for the singing of a Canada. Claire, this convocation dismissed. <laughs>